Okay, so for the first two videos, we dealt with basic functionality, the basic physics. So let's make this a little bit more goal um, and rating oriented now, so is that there's an object you need to destroy, and then you get a star rating, uh, which is pretty typical for games, particularly mobile games. So all I did is I imported this image, just dragged and dropped it from an external folder, and I imported this image. So let's make a few tweaks to what we've got here. Um, let's take this board, move it out just a little bit, and then take this board and scale it out. Don't have to do that, but at least you know that you can do that. So that way you're not uh, stuck having to make a whole bunch of boards if you want them just to be a little bit bigger. It's easy enough just to scale them like that. Now, what we want to do is we want to take our chest object, drag and drop it into the scene, and position it in there. So this is going to be the goal, is that you're not just trying to destroy the structure, you're actually trying to get at the chest. Now the chest, depending on how you want to do it, the chest could be destroyed by uh, boards, or it could be destroyed only by the cannon board, a uh, cannon ball. So, for simplicity's sake, let's have it just be the cannonball that it can't be destroyed by the boards collapsing on it. So, the way we do that is we're going to add a component, we're going to do Physics 2D, and we're going to do Box Collider. So, it's not going to get knocked around. It's not going to be pushed around by the boards, or it's not going to be pushed around by the ball either, um, because there's no physics. We'd have to uh, do a few other things to make that happen. So for now, uh, this can detect collisions, but will not be pushed around because there is no physics object on it. Or should I say there's no rigid body on it. So let's just run it and see how that works. So we'll aim the cannon, and we'll fire. You see the the board hits it, but doesn't move it. It's an immovable object. Let's just push that down a little bit. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is once the ball comes to a stop, we really want it to uh, self-destroy. So we'll go back to that ball control script, and what we'll do is we'll just check its velocity. So if and we'll use get component and we will use the rigid body on it so if the rigid body velocity and we'll check two coordinates we'll check the x and we'll say if it is less then say 0.2 and we'll just copy and paste this because what we're going to do is we're now going to check the Y component And now I have to surround the whole thing in parentheses since there's two that would check it. So, quick recap. We're looking at the rigid body component. So, uh, let's go to our ball object. So, here's the rigid body. We're saying that if the x velocity is less than 0.2, so it's moving very slowly horizontally, and the y velocity is, is less than less than two, uh, 0.2. So they both have to be moving very slow. You can't do just one because say you drop it straight and it lands, um, or actually let's use a better example. Say it's rolling horizontally. Well, it has no a y velocity because it's only moving horizontally. Likewise, if you're dropping it, it has no x velocity if it's dropping straight. So you really got to check both velocities. So let's see what we can do with this. And uh, pretty straightforward. If it reaches that th threshold, then just 
destroy dot game object. Now you can do a couple of things here. You can make these numbers even smaller or you can give this a, a slight delay like once it reaches these numbers then game object um, there's another argument here that you don't have to use you can do say one that's measured in seconds so once it reaches these thresholds give it another second and then it gets destroyed so you can do that if you want we'll just leave it like this and let's play that out see how that works um, actually now that I think about it we do want the delay you know why because if it comes to an abrupt halt, we don't want it to suddenly delete, now do we? Because if you shoot it into a corner, it may just stop there. So let's give it a two second delay. So sorry, I kind of talked myself into it. There, so that looks pretty good actually. Uh, let's tweak it a little bit, we'll give it a three seconds. And that's exactly the kind of scenario that I was talking about, that sometimes it may come to abrupt halt. Um, you don't want it to be too jarring for the uh, player. Now it is possible that it slows down and then something hits it and speeds it up, which we just saw there. So long term might have to tweak this a little bit, like you might want to put a, hmm, not sure how you'd do that, but you'd want to not destroy it. So um, we'll leave it like this for now. Um, so it is possible that something would uh, come to a halt, the ball could come to a halt, and then something bumps it and starts moving it again. Uh, for now, we'll leave it like this, though. Okay, so now the ball comes to halt and gets destroyed. We didn't have that before. Uh, we now have an object that needs to be destroyed. So, we got a couple ways that we can deal with that. We can either put a script on that, or we can put a script on the ball. Um, I'd say we'd put the script on... Well, we'll put the script on the chest. So, right-click create C sharp we'll call this chest control click on the chest drag and drop that onto it and now let's go ahead and open it up there's that error message I talked about that shows up for some reason so outside of start, outside of update, we want to do similar to what we did on planks, void. And I wonder if you probably could rather having, yeah, probably could have the plank control and chest control be integrated into one script, but that's fine. We'll proceed like this. So void on collision 2D, and I get rid of that capital O because it won't work. On collision enter 2D collision 2D other. brackets. So, if other dot game object dot name. So you can see it's very similar to the plank control, the plank control. So that's why I was saying that perhaps it could be um, combined, but uh, this is uh, specifically taken on a damage appearance. Um, which you could actually do with the chest as well. So you probably could integrate it, but we'll proceed like this. And this also demonstrates what I was talking about, that uh, if you have a lot of scripts, you might be checking for that name over and over again. So since we already fixed it, when the ball is uh, instantiated, we don't have to worry about the fact that it's named clone because we renamed it right within the ball control. 
And sorry, I'm not trying to confuse anyone. I'm just talking about the alternatives because it gets back to what I uh, usually say is that I'm not showing you the only way. I'm not showing you necessarily the best way. I'm showing you a way um, to teach. And then you, if you have a better way to do it, great. So, um, and in this case, we'll just destroy. And then what we'll do is, okay, so it gets destroyed. Let's run that. Nice. So now let's limit how many balls can be shot. So what we need to do is we need to create a static variable. So public static, and this will be an int because it should be uh, it should not be any decimals and it's, uh, we'll call it total balls. And we'll set it to say three. It's a static variable because it, it, it's gonna have to be uh, referred to in several locations. So you need different objects to be able to access it. So you have to make it static or else it'll only be accessible from uh, this one script. So can and control And when we shoot the ball, we need to take that new variable. So we have to, since it's static, we have to tell Unity where it is. It's in the ball control script, and it's called total balls. So minus equal one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the ball image. We're going to create a new object. So even though it's the same image, it's not the same object. I'm going to put this up in the upper left corner. And we'll also shrink it because we don't want to have it be confusing to uh, the player. So we can't shrink the image itself because that will change the size of, the, of any object that uses the ball. So in this case, we want to shrink this specific object. So let's do uh, 0.7 and 0.7. So in other words, you want a smaller version because this is going to show you your totals. Now game object, create empty, and this is going to be, we'll call this ball counter. So on the ball counter, we're going to add a component, we're going to add a mesh, we're going to add a text mesh, and it's going to be now, I haven't used a text mesh yet since using point, uh, ver, uh, Unity 5, but normally, at least in a 4x, you had to change the character size, so we'll see if that's still true. So 0.5 for character spacing, uh, font size, let's make it 20, and uh, font, we'll choose Arial, and we won't put anything in the t actually let's just see what that looks like let's slide this over put in the number three can mm. in control oh sorry i didn't even notice that var was there I, my apologies i didn't even notice that happened so sorry All right, so that's a little bit small. So let's see if this can get to a larger size now that it's the new version, or if it gets blurry. That actually looks OK. So maybe you don't have to shrink it as much as uh, you used to. And that's why I mentioned that, because uh, this is the first time that I've used a text mesh in Unity 5.
getting a little bit blurry, so maybe you don't have to shrink it as much, but it's looking like maybe 0.3 is about the largest you'd want that to be. The rest you'd have to do by changing font size. So what's going to happen is this number needs to change. So, we now need a... We have a couple ways we can do, do this. We can either have this have its own script and uh, have it update based on the total balls number, or we can attach it to another object and have that script change it. Again, uh, preference, it really isn't going to create a performance issue. It's just a matter of do you try to minimize how many scripts you have uh, and try to consolidate the functionality into a few scripts or would you rather have more simpler scripts? Again, for a game like this, it's not going to impact uh, performance. So let's just go ahead and add a new script. Uh, if nothing else, in some ways troubleshooting is easier because it's telling you exactly what controls what. So we'll call this uh, counter control. So we'll go to the ball counter, we'll add counter control, and we'll go into there. Again, there's that error message about file endings. And in the update section, we'll change this to get component. And it's the text mesh that we're changing. And it's specifically the text attribute of the text mesh and we want it to be set to that variable so again we have to tell unity where the variable is it's in ball control and it's the total balls variable so now and that's in Thirteen forty-three. Really doesn't like that. Did that change? Oh, actually, you know what this is? It's not giving me. Well, actually, it is giving me the right error, saying can't convert int to string. So you just have to add to string. Sorry about that. Haven't done that in a while. So get component of uh, the object that the script is attached to. It's attached to an object that is a text mesh. So we're getting the te text mesh uh, component. Uh, we're getting the text attribute and we're changing this value. So since this is an int, you just have to append to string. Kind of silly to me, but the system requires you to actually convert it. So and now what should happen is this number should decrease when we fire. So I'm not going to aim, I'm just going to fire. And there it goes. There it goes. And it got destroyed. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to fire too many. Okay, so just to keep someone from wailing on the space and shooting too many off, what we're going to do is in Canon Control, we're going to say okay uh, if the proper key was used, but we're going to put in another condition. We're going to say and In control dot total why isn't it showing up? Oh it's not kin and control, my apologies. Ball control dot total balls is greater than zero. Now we just need an extra parenthesis at the beginning because you have to have parentheses surrounding the whole mess since there's more than one value being checked. Oh, sorry. That's what's doing it. Semicolon was messing it up. That's why it was completely breaking the if statement. Now it should work. There we go. Much better. So even if you try to rapid fire, it stops at zero. Excellent. 
Excellent. All right, so I think that's about enough for this video. So we've put in a ball counter on the screen. Uh, we also put in a control, so if it reaches zero, it uh, will no longer shoot anymore. We've put in a control so that we now have an object that is the goal to be destroyed, and it can only be destroyed by the cannon ball. So uh, we didn't use the star yet. Basically, this is going to be used for rating, and we'll do that in scoring in the next video.